but we're in Luke chapter 5, and I want to read this, this setting of Scripture here. We're going to be reading 17 to 26. Luke chapter 5, 17 through 26. And it came to pass on a certain day, as he was teaching, that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Remember that. And the power of the Lord was present there to heal them. 18. And behold, men brought in a bed a man which was taken from palsy. And they sought means to bring him in and lay him before him. And when they could not find by what way they might bring him in, because of the multitude, they went up on the housetop and let him down through the tiling with his couch into the mist before Jesus. And when he saw their faith, he said unto them, Jesus speaking, Man, thy sins are forgiven thee. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this which speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? And when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answered and said unto them, What reason ye in your hearts? Whether it is easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Rise up and walk. But that ye may know that the Son of Man has power upon the earth to forgive sins, he said unto the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise, and take up thy couch, and go into thy house. And immediately he rose up before them and took up that whereon he lay and departed to his own house, glorifying God. And they were all amazed and they glorified God and were filled with fear, saying, We have seen strange things today. So here we see this scripture where these men, just to kind of paraphrase it, where these four men, they came and they're carrying uh, this man who was paralyzed. And so they were bringing him in, and there was, there was, the multitude was so great, they couldn't get into the building, into where Jesus was at. And so they decided they were going to take off the tiles off the roof, and we're going to lower him down to where we can get him in front of where Jesus is at. And so Jesus, the, it says the, the power of God was there to heal, so everything was set. The stage was set. It would have been a done deal if they could have just walked in. It would have been nice to be able to walk in and just stand before him. He lays hands on and him be healed and go home. But there were some things that were standing in the way of them to get in there. Standing in the way to things that were holding them back. There were obstructions. And I want to talk to you in a, in a light here today in a, in a way that the Holy Spirit has shown me in the scripture here. And I begin to look at it. And I want you to look at this house that's represented there today as the roof, as this house. Because we know that Jesus is in our heart, do we not? Do we know that his presence is here and he's able to heal? Right? Because he accomplished the work. Because he lives and dwells in us, he tells us to lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. It's not my power, it's the one who lives in me who has the power to heal, first of all. But there's obstructions that we have in our life. And I like the story here because you can see the story where they had to take off the tiles. Sometimes there has to be thoughts that have to be taken off. Things that obstruct us from getting to Jesus for that need to be met. Sometimes there has to be a breaking down. Sometimes things are so crowded and we can't believe. Or there's different sources that may be holding you back. Or maybe you grew up. Or maybe the past. Or maybe the enemy is attacking you in some way in your thoughts. But you know that Jesus is there prepared to heal. But i got to get to Jesus. And so a lot of times it's our thoughts that we have in our own mind. The ceiling needs to come off here. Our thoughts need to come off so we can see Christ. But sometimes that's not enough. Those four men begin to lower them down. And it's going to take some humbling for us to humble ourselves down before Jesus. It's not just enough to set our, our thoughts aside. But we're going to have to recognize that he's in the house and he's there to prepared to heal you or to meet your need. I thought this was awesome when the Holy Spirit began to open this up. But any time that you study the Word of God, yes, there's, there's stories that are here and they're historical truths. But yet you have to look at the parallel in the Spirit. 
And so a lot of times people can't get the spiritual aspect of the principle or the truth unless they're spiritual. So it's important that we have a relationship with God because if we don't have a relationship with God, then we're not spiritual. It's that simple because we enter into, when we accept Jesus, we're born again. And so if we're born again, there's, there's a new sense, a new revelation. And so he comes and lives, he begins to lead us into truth. He helps us to understand the principles. See, it's great to look in there and thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not commit adultery. You know, when we know those things, those are things that you could live by here. But yet we see where is the big principle here. The big principle here is the spiritual aspect of those things that keeps us right before God, keeps our heart right before God, where we can function. We're just not here to get knowledge. We're here to function for the kingdom of God. If I had a thought or title this morning, I've had it, I've written it down. It says paralyzed, but not helpless. Paralyzed, but not helpless. Paralyzed. And we have become paralyzed, but we're not helpless. What I mean is we've allowed things in our mind to keep us from, from believing that God can really do. Yes, it's one thing to believe the blue car went by, but it's, it's another thing when you become an eyewitness of the blue car that went by, then it becomes more of a reality. So a lot of times we need to get into the word and get into the, what God is saying so we have a reality of what's going on. We need to get a little bit closer. We need to experience God in a greater way to understand the things that he wants to talk about. But I believe God is trying to move the church into a place of the miraculous today. That's what I want to talk to you about today is moving you into a miraculous. We have been paralyzed for so long that our minds and our thoughts are so bound up. Because we're used to thinking this. We're used to expecting things. We're used to allowing things in our life. Things that become obstructions. Things that get in our way. Things that hinder us from really receiving it from God. We studied on Wednesday. And Wednesday, Jesus was talking about, he said, the problem is, is unbelief. And the problem is, with, when things are in our way, unbelief is a big factor. Fear is a big factor. Doubt is a big factor. When we have these things in our way, we can't move into the miraculous. I need to be moving into the miraculous. I need to be laying hands on the sick and then recovering. I need to be speaking words that speaks life to other people so they know that Jesus is the way and Jesus can come in and bring peace and comfort into their life. I need that. So I can't have my own thoughts manipulated up here. I have to remove some of the tiles. And those men had to remove the tiles. They had to remove the tiles. They began to work. It wasn't an easy task, but it said they tore off the tile to lower that man that was in a bed, that was stationary, that was in a bed, and they put, had ropes, and they lowered him down. So it takes an effort. It's not just a, a, a mind over matter thing. It's not just a thing to where, oh, yes, I'm just thinking these things, and yes, I'm struggling and everything, but it's going to take some effort on your part. It's going to take some effort. You have to pull down those thoughts. That's what the scripture says. Pull down every thought that it exalts itself against the knowledge of God. So what, how does that work? Because then I have to go to the word of God. I have to put in what is truth in there and to where I can embrace that truth. Because you're not going to replace the negative. You're not going to replace the fear. You're not going to replace the doubt just with another thought. You're going to have to replace it with the word of God because it's going to take the word of God to defeat those thoughts. Because those thoughts will always try and return to you. You may overcome them, but the enemy will always come back and try and bring that same thought where there's fear. Maybe, you, maybe you've been burnt sometime or, or you've lost some loved one and, and you're thinking again, well, I'm, I'm thinking about, I, I, I'm, I'm faced with this situation and there's a possibility that I might lose this loved one and I've already lost before. So, uh, God, is there any hope? You need the hope of God. You need God to rely upon. You need the faith of God. And so you need to put the word of God in, in your heart. He says, I'm the Lord that healeth thee. You need to know that he's the Lord that bore the stripes at Calvary, that took on your, your healing as well as your sins. And so your healing is for the healing of somebody else. But it's up to you to move, to move the thoughts. Move away from, I lost my mother. I lost my father. I lost, we've lost, I told Clayton this morning, I've lost probably about three people in the last week that I knew, not family, but people I've known for years and years and years. And now they're having funerals in my hometown. And it's like they're week, weeks apart. And so it's like to show up and I'd have to go down two or three times. I'm going to try and go down the 19th for, for a, a lady who passed away. She was my youth director years ago. I, I figured she changed my diaper when I was a little baby. I could show up to her funeral. But no, she's always been there and always a good person 
to me in life and everything, and I want to make sure that I, I honor the family for her. And there were some others, another lady, they're going to they're gonna, uh, have a memorial service on, on uh, Monday, this Monday. Great lady, great lady. And I appreciate the people, but it's just amazing how many people. But I'm just saying, what I'm saying is I can get caught up. I can get caught up. When God wants to do something miraculous, I can get caught up. Well, they died. They died. They died. They died. And I believe if you can step into a place to where, you know what? Yes, that may have happened, but yet that, that's not the way everything has to go. I could press into God and I could see the change. And I don't mean to, to bring up about like David's daughter. David's daughter, which she had passed away, Missy. She had passed away. And she was, yeah, Missy was. Yeah. She's alive now. But I have to get to that part of the story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but David called me up one time and we were, we were I was driving and he said, you know, he goes he goes Missy's the um paramedics can't get a heartbeat. And it just came across my spirit and it said and I said, "You know what? Let's bind death right now in the name of Jesus. We're going to bind death in the name of Jesus. And I'm not taking myself any credit. I'm saying it just it's something that overwhelmed me, just a faith that arose in me because of Christ. He was there to heal. He was there to revive. And so at that time, I, I told David, let's come to agreement. Me and David began to pray. And he said, as soon as we begin to pray, the paramedic said, I got a pulse. And she had been gone for, I don't know, 45 minutes or 30 minutes or 20 minutes, something like that. I don't want to exaggerate. But it was quite an extended time where she was gone. But yet she's alive today, and she's doing well today. She's married, and she has her children with her, and she's, she's going to church and everything like that. But what if I would have just said, oh God, I know that you're trying to move me, God, in this particular circumstance, this particular circumstance, but I've seen too many people die, God, and I'm afraid to really get out there and stand and say, you know what? I'm just going to declare what I'm feeling in my spirit, what God's telling me to declare. What if we didn't do that? But yet there was something. We had to get past some thoughts of, of what if it don't happen? Or what if it's not real? Or what if the word of God is not really clear on what it's saying? But I'm going to stand in faith believing that Jesus is there to do what he said he was going to do. He was in the house to heal. And so they knew he was in the house to heal. So it didn't matter what they had experienced before. It didn't matter about the multitude. It didn't matter about anything. They didn't even care if they had tickets to the, to the concert that day. They were going to make a way and lower themselves into that place. They lowered that man down there before the Lord. And the Lord said, arise and take up your bed. And he arose and took his bed and he walked. Because somebody dared to take some tiles off. And it's time that we wake up and take some of our thought patterns off. Take some of these things out of the way. I don't care how many times that it's turned out one way. Jesus is still able to do abundantly beyond what we ask or what we think. The things that we commit to him, it says. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. So I pretty much cleared that point. There has to be a mind change. There has to be a thought. Removal. Sometimes we need brain surgery. Sometimes it's that bad. You know what I mean? There's some people that are just so negative. They always look on the negative. They look at the, the half of the glass, all right, but it's the, well, it's the old glum, the old gulliver. We're doomed. We're doomed. Huh? And so, so many times we're just eight, we just jump on it right away. And when you speak something, that's really what the Bible says from out of your mouth or from out of your, how's that scripture say? Anyway, in the heart, I'll say it my way, from the heart, the mouth speaks because the issues of life are in here. Whatsoever man believes, so is he. Okay, there's three scriptures that I gave you all broken up. But it, basically, whatever's in your heart, that's who you are and that's what you believe. That's what you're going to produce. That's just the English way, the English without the King James. All right, so whatever in your heart, what you believe in here is what's going to be produced. So if you've got doubt and you've got fear in your heart, guess what's going to be produced? The things that you speak. Because from the heart, the mouth speaks. That's, what, that's the scripture I was looking for. And so from out of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so we have to know that when we say something, don't, don't just ignore things that you say sometimes. Listen to yourself talk. Listen to yourself in your responses sometimes in a situation or a crisis. Sometimes you may be impatient. Sometimes you may be angry. Sometimes you may be fearful or frustrated. If you listen to the words that you say, 
you can rest assured there's something in, the, in your heart. doesn't mean that you're all sinning, dying, and going to hell. It means you need some work. You need some heart work, too. But anyway, I just threw that out there because it's important what we speak, that we speak. Because Jesus told him, arise. He spoke it. Arise. Okay, the next thing I want to talk to you about is humbling. Humbling. That's one of the things we have to understand. It has to be a humbling. There has to be some humility. And I think the church world today doesn't know what humility is. They really don't know what humility is. It says Jesus had a lowly spirit. He was full of humility. Everything that he did, he was never gloating. He was never prideful. It was never about him. It was about the Father. He goes, I don't say anything unless the Father says it. And you can rest assured today as we, we see the Antichrist coming across, and I'm just throwing this in here because it's just a thought, but as we see the Antichrist coming into play more and more evident every day, it's not that he just showed up or there's a man, or, it's a spirit of Antichrist. And the spirit of Antichrist, what happens to them, it is prideful. It is gloating. It's all about them. But in the spirit of Christ, it's humility. It's love. And I believe that's the principle that we can live by today is this pattern here that we can know that when we break down the thoughts and we humble ourselves and we lower ourselves to the foot of Christ, we can ask anything because he's there to heal. He's here to heal this morning. Whatever you have need of, whatever you have need of, he's here. Like Aaron, right? Your brother? Aaron? Aaron needs prayer. I, I didn't mean... Not to mention him for the last couple of weeks. We get so much going, we lose our, lose our thoughts. But Aaron needs a miracle today. You have different ones that you know that needs a miracle today. You have the ability today. The Bible says if we agree as touching anything, it shall come to pass. So what I want to do this morning, this is the end of my sermon. But what I want to do this morning, I want us to come into agreement. There are people who have needs, not, to, not just here, but there are people who have needs these little babies that we're talking about, Stella, we need God to do something major, and I believe he's here to heal. But we have to take off the, the things that would hinder us because I don't want nothing obstructing my belief because my Lord is able to heal. And I believe the Bible says if we agree as such a thing, it shall come to pass. And I believe it today. And I believe God wants to demonstrate the miraculous to you this morning. That he wants to demonstrate the miraculous to you this morning. He wants to show you what it's like to walk in his way when we surrender everything to him, when we humble ourselves before him, when we take off our old thinking cap and we put on the new mind, the mind of Christ, and we allow ourselves to follow after the truth of the word, then there's nothing we can expect except for success. And so I'm going to ask you this morning to stand up in here in the church. I'm not going to ask you to come forward. We're going to pray right where you're at. I'm going to move this pulpit here because I'm going to come out here in the front. 